Hello, I'm Doug. This is a Measurement 101 page cast. Three minutes talking about a page on this website. In this case, the landing page. This is all about measurements of events in space time. We were raised on the idea of absolute space and absolute time not having any relationship to each other. That idea was actually due to Newton. Now, in 1905, Einstein proposed that space marry time to become space time. And this is actually a hard marriage to understand even today. On this page, two stars go supernova. Uh, there goes one, <laughs> uh, followed by another. Okay, and we can measure that time if we've got ourselves a nice handy stopwatch. And since the stars are in different locations, we can also measure the distance between the two events. So together, these two types of measurements make up a difference in space time. Four kids are watching all of this stuff go on. Now, each kid makes a different measurement of time and a different measurement of space, so long as these are absurdly accurate uh, devices they're carrying with them, and they're just not going to be the same. Now, on this website, I'm going to show you what the four kids can agree upon, and it involves squaring the values that they get from the time measurement and the space measurement. I am the reference observer, as you can tell from the outfit. The reference is really with the things causing the events themselves. And so no motion, just at the same place in the gravity field. And I'm going to actually ignore the kids from here on out. And just let's focus on the center. But like, <laughs> what does one do with measurements anyway? Well, I do something that's both simple and unusual. I square the difference between the events in space-time. Now, that's actually not a legal move using the standard accounting system of physics, which is called a tensor. What I use is a type of math called a quaternion, where squaring of events in space-time is uh, perfectly A-OK. -okay. So, this dt squared minus dr squared is called the interval. Now, I like to actually make things really concrete, and so I made up some numbers. <laughs> I said, well, that time, let's call it like five, okay? That time dt. And let's say a three for the space difference of dr. So the interval becomes five squared, 25, minus three squared, nine equals 16. The other term, it's a 2dt dr, uh, doesn't even have a name in standard physics. I had to make one up, so I called it space times time. Maybe I should have called it times times space, but it doesn't matter. It's 2 times 3 times 5, 30. Now, the walkers agree about the interval. And that's the physics of special relativity that Einstein developed in 1905. The above and the below kids, they agree on space times time. Or at least that's my new proposal that I call quaternion gravity. Hello, I'm Doug. This is a Measurement 101 page cast. Three minutes talking about a web page on this site. In this case, measurements made while walking, or equivalently, the special relativity page. So we have these two supernova. And I, as the reference observer, say that the time interval between the two, it, it, dt, is exactly five. And I use my trusty ruler and get the space dr measurement, and it's exactly three. And what I like to do is square things up and get the interval being 16 and the space time time being 30. And that is our starting point. Hello, I'm Special Relativity Doug in blue. 
and everything on this page that's blue is about special relativity. So it says that a quaternion squared equals an interval, the important thing, and the space time time. Because an invariant interval is special relativity. So what does that mean exactly? Well, let's focus on that girl who's walking towards the events. She's going to get the news sooner about these explosions because she's going towards the action. So that means her time dt is going to be a smaller number so long as this is an incredibly accurate watch. <laughs> and if she measures the distance between them with her ruler, it's going to be ever so slightly smaller. So now what we do is we square that smaller dt, time dt, and the smaller space dr. What do we get? Well, the interval is exactly equal to the reference interval and because that is how special relativity works. That is what they agree upon. Now the space times time, it's made of a smaller time, it's made of a smaller space, and so that number is going to be less than 30. Now let's think about that girl walking away. Okay, she is going to get the news a little bit later, right? So that means her time dt is going to be a little bit larger, and the distance is going to look a little bit bigger to her. Now I should make something very clear. There's nothing wrong with these watches or rulers, okay? It's just by comparison with the reference that things look a little different. But then we square these numbers. And when we do that with the larger time dt and the larger dr space thing, we find that the interval is exactly the same, no difference from the reference observer and also no difference from the walking towards girl. Now the space times time is made of a larger time, larger space, therefore it is larger than 30. And that's it for this page cast about special relativity. Hello, I'm Doug. This is a Measurement 101 page cast, three minutes talking about a particular web page on this site. In this case, I'm talking about the measuring while up or down, or equivalently, the quaternion gravity page. So there, there are these two supernova, and the reference observer, that's me, goes and set, measures the time and says the time between those two events is five. And the distance between the two is three. So we do the square to find that the interval is 16, and the space times time is 30. And that's our starting point. Hello, I'm Quaternion Gravity Doug in yellow. Everything Kelly Green on this page is about quaternion gravity. So it says a quaternion squared equals the interval and space times time. An invariant space times time is quaternion gravity. But what does that mean? Well, let's focus on that girl floating up above there with those balloons. She's not slowed down by gravity, so her clock is going to tick a little faster. And if she measures the time between those two events with her faster clock, it's going to end up with a larger number. On the other hand, that ruler he's us she's using <laughs> expands in space and gets larger. And so if she uses that to measure the distance between those two events, it will end up with a smaller number. One number is getting larger, the other is getting smaller. Now, changes in are very precise. In the standard approach to gravity, known as Einstein's general relativity, the bigger dt almost cancels out the smaller dr. But not exactly. In my quaternion gravity proposal, in fact, it's all about the, the larger dt exactly canceling out the smaller space dr. And the result is an invariant space times time of 30 for the person 
floating above the clouds, exactly equal to what the reference observer got. But what about the interval? Well, that's made up of a larger number minus a smaller number. So minus times a minus is OK. So, uh, so the result is an interval that is actually larger than the reference observer. But what about that guy lying down, pointing up at the, the two supernova? Well, he feels the weight of gravity. And so that means his clock is going to tick a little slower. And with that slow clock, he's going to think the, dis the time between uh, the two explosions is less. His meter stick is also a little smaller. <laughs> okay, So his spatial measurement is going to say, hey, that distance is actually a little larger. Okay, But in the quaternion gravity proposal, those exactly cancel out. And so the result is an invariant space times time of 30, exactly equal to what the reference observer gets, and exactly equal to the balloon girl floating up above there is. But what about his interval? OK, his interval is made up <clears throat> of a positive number that's smaller minus a bigger negative number. And that means that the interval is, in fact, smaller than the, the reference uh, interval and, of course, smaller than that girl floating above. And that's it for this PageCast. Hello, I'm Doug. This is a Measurement 101 page cast, three minutes talking about a particular web page on this site. In this case, the Measure It All page, or Special Relativity and Quaternion Gravity. Now, this page tries to say too much because it's like a three-hat affair. So let's try not to get confused. <laughs> we start where we always do which is to say that a quaternion squared equals the interval and space times time. An invariant interval is special relativity. It's the stuff in blue. An invariant space times time is quaternion gravity. It is the stuff in Kelly Green. I am the reference observer. Now, we've got a pair of stars that go supernova. And I measure the time between those two events, and I say it's 5. I measure the spatial distance between the two and say it's 3. Now, we square those things, because we're working with quaternions, and we get an interval of 16 and a space times time of 30. And everyone compares their results to me. I am the special relativity Doug in blue. Focus on those walkers and ignore those guys above and below. All the guys who are walking have the same interval as the reference observer of 16. And that is special relativity. I am quaternion gravity Doug in yellow. Focus on the measurements above and below. Ignore the walkers. The folks above and below all have the same space times time value of 30 and agree with that reference observer about that value. And that is the heart of my quaternion gravity proposal. The kids walking don't agree with the kids above and below about like anything. The intervals are different and the space-times time is different. But that's OK. What matters is the different agreements the kids make with me, the reference observer. The walkers agree about the interval. That is special relativity. And the kids above and below agree about space-times time. That is my quaternion gravity proposal. And that's it for this PageCast. Thank you.